Hello and welcome to this week's episode of The Graham Show. I'm the host, Graham Douglas, and we are here today in, uh, in Times Square at the restaurant Angus Mac and Doe. And I am thrilled and giddy that I have with me today Sherry Renee Scott. Welcome to the show, Sherry. It's mm. such a delight to have you. It's really nice to be here, Graham. You have no idea how exciting this is for me. <laughs> I mean, this is, this is like, you know, 13-year-old Graham's dream to be sitting across from you, now having a, a, a very honest conversation, and to call you a friend on top of that. I would, yes, it is definitely. Like, it's, it's pretty cool. That's, I, I, I don't understand your childhood, but other than that, I'm, I'm really, <laughs> I appreciate that very much. <laughs> so I want to start by talking to you about your, your cabaret engagement. Will you talk to me a little bit about the concept of the show? Um, it's, um, hmm, you know, I just uh, I w am, it's natural for me to write and, um, and it's also natural for me to tell stories and then also to sing. Mm -hmm. So I feel that um, I learned that uh, in, in working on Everyday Rapture, um, that's kind of how I uh, have always been w working towards uh, that kind of art form and wanting to get out of the um, eight show a week kind of routine and uh, get a more intimate in a mm -hmm. weird way mm -hmm. that um, less theatrical um, and explore music in a way that yeah. I haven't been able to um, and um, explore um, talking about subjects that are personal and yet you know are funny only because they're funny because of the serious amount of pain and suffering that I go through that ends up then being humorous to others which I think you know, there's nothing as funny as, as people suffering. And so I like to bring that out um, and then sing about it. <laughs> um, but um, so no, this was like a real uh, life adjustment. I've lived in fear of intimacy and I, 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 I'm, I try hard to rarely be intimate in my real life. So now I'm making this rare intimate appearance. <laughs> so, so then how does, how does this differ from, from the intimacy that you you were expressing and that you felt in Everyday Rapture, outside of this, the, the, the size of the venue. Right. Um, you know, Everyday Rapture unfolded over time, you know, as the, this writing that Dick and I were doing. And, um, Dick Scanlon, Dick who Scanlon was your writing I, partner yeah, on Everyday Rapture. Dick Scanlon, who's great and still my, you know, writing partner on, on other projects. And, and um, we, uh, it developed over time and then we, you know, they convinced me that, and Dick knew that we had a theater piece but it was also based on this kind of character that I that would get me out on stage. Um, mm. That is is much more balls to the wall, you know, headlights on high beam, loves being on like she lives to be on stage, you know, which is I think my fear of becoming that person. That real life happens on stage, and then actual life off stage becomes the illusion, like unreality part but then life on stage becomes real and vibrant and alive, and then you kind of turn off off stage. And I have lived in fear of that, and so I created a character who is that fear. It's kind of your alter ego. <laughs> yes, yeah, and, and, and you know, we created a character that would, uh -huh. was, um, really enjoyed the spotlight and really lived to perform, and, and, uh, um, uh, and that made it easier of course, to watch her fall and and be humiliated and you know right. and all the kind of fun comedy that comes from that, and of course, you know, we used aspects of my life, um, but I think Dick is such you know such a um, you know consummate writer and professional that he was able to say how much we could make it seem like an autobiographical okay. piece. Um, and use that autobiographical yeah. uh, theatrical element and and not make fun of it really mm -hmm. go deep into that art form and as was my idea in, in, in dream was that we never revealed anything about me personally <laughs> interesting so <laughs> so now you're saying that that this that the cabaret piece which is called mm -hmm. I love the title piece of meat piece of meat mm -hmm. you're actually revealing this more this true intimate side of Sherry. Right, this is a- Is it still fictionalized? 
Of course, because like any time you want to write something you good, have to dramaticize you're going to have to, you know, go to extremes, I yeah. think, which is, you know, um, that's why it makes it fun. Right. But the important thing is, as Dick taught me, is that it's always true. It doesn't have to be factual to be mm -hmm. true. Mm -hmm. The important part is to get to the truth of the matter, and that takes a lot of writing and unwriting mm. and rewriting. But so this piece, um, piece of meat, is a really about a, a true life uh, struggle that I have gone through recently, um, and I was compelled, you know, to write about it and share it because I, I felt it was something that was not that explored. I couldn't find any help for it when I needed help for it. It's basically about desires and the desire to remain what I see as an enlightened <laughs> human being while dealing with these new overwhelming animalistic base urges mm. and desires that were coming up in me. And uh, um, it, it, it involves you know, food and um, a way of being um, with food and that you are for decades and decades and, and then when you have these kind of base animal desires come up and that manifest themselves in many ways, you know, uh, sexually and, yeah. and, um, uh, and, and every kind of way and peace uh, and, and how do you deal with that? How do you hang on to what you see as your better self and try to let go of this base animal self? So is, uh, are, is the music all original or are you pulling on on, on standards? Um, it's, uh, I'm working with Todd Almond, who's a really brilliant right. um, young composer in his own right and performer in his own right. And um, we do um, a couple original songs of his that, uh, he has a lot of material, but they, Todd and I started working on this show together as a musical exploration. Mm. And we just listened to back and forth to sharing music, a lot of music we loved, a lot of music that, oh, do you know this song, da da da, and back and forth, and, or I would say, I've always wanted to do this song, I know exactly how I hear it, and we would start working on it, and it would morph into something else, and more and more and more. Mm. Or he would show me a song I'd never heard before, and I would be like, I love it. <laughs> and we realized that all of these songs were um, uh, reflecting this kind of inner struggle that I happened to go through. Interesting. The ones that he was drawn towards doing, the ones that I was drawn towards doing. There was a theme that was, was going through there. There was a theme that was going through, and, huh. I, and it kept showing up that, I, that this story that I was going through also needed to be expressed. Yeah. So it was from there, you pulled the theme from those songs and then, and then built Sorry. around it. Yeah, the, the music started uh, first, and through as I was trying to shove down this issue uh. that I was dealing mm -hmm. with, it just kept popping up. It kept popping up even through the songs that we were drawn towards, yeah. wanting to play and hang out and jam. And that's the dream, was to get back you know, into music for music's sake. Sure. And yeah. the joy of singing and the joy of discovering and being inside of a song. And as opposed to, uh, I, I've got to do this you know, eight times a week and mm -hmm. I've got to get to this point mm -hmm. you know, every night. and. And, and, and then when I'm not at this point, I've got to fake that I'm at this point emotionally. So do you feel like there's more joy in this type of material for you than there is in performing? I don't know. I, I mean, I, there's I mean, cause definite. Because you, you've, 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 you've tried the show out, out of town. Out of town, out of town. We went to an out of town tryout um, in Australia. Uh -huh. We felt like that was um, far, far, far away. <laughs> far enough out of town <laughs> that you know, we could be safe. Even the bloggers couldn't get to, to that. We tried to go to like, you know, New Guinea, but uh, it would, there wasn't a big, you know, theater audience there yet. We're developing through Shikaboom Ghost Light Records, so yes, a lot of we'll talk CDs about more to about New about Guinea. Yes. Does New Guinea even exist? I don't even know yes, if these are even like, yes. like everybody changes their names all the time. Oh, that's like, true. Uh, not just people, but countries now. So it's hard uh, to remember New what Guinea still exists, I believe. Yes. I will, I will I'll, I'll confirm. Yes, I know Old Guinea exists because I think I dated him. Anyway, um, but um, at this, so this, uh, but anyway, we so went out So was at the Neighborhood town. Playhouse, right? Yes, yes Neighborhood yeah, Playhouse. Yeah. Old Guinea, I was so into right. those. Um, that was, yes, my, that old age. Guinea. Old um, Guinea. I was into older Guineas then. But, um, Let me give you this in case you oh, get warm. Oh, and I'm getting a little hot piece yes, of meat-ish yes, here. Just to, a, 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 a side note, this, this fan 
is uh, I met Sherry, uh, ran into her randomly in He's Brooklyn. not talking about me as a fan of him. He's talking about this actual <laughs> yes, fan. The fan. Uh -huh. I'm a fan of Sherry. She is not a fan of me. I am. Uh, oh, well, thank you. I ran into Sherry in Brooklyn, and she happened to be seeing this play, the Melancholy play, and they were giving these fans away, and she gave me this fan when I met her on the side of the street. Which was a real gift because it was 107 it degrees outside. It was really, really hot. Mm -hmm. I was in you know, cutoffs and a tank top. Mm -hmm. And you look fabulous as you. always, mm -hmm. right, right. Mm -hmm. And so anyway, I promised her that I would bring it to the shoot today so she could feel extra glamorous with her. And this was the Todd Almond who you were just talking about. <laughs> That's right. Todd Almond, who's my musical director. Exactly. And, and we'd sing duets together in the show. And exactly. um, he was, uh, had uh, put music to a play by Sarah Rule. And they were part of the um, the 13P thing. And, um, and it was beautiful. And um, and it's a piece too. It's called a new chamber piece. It's different than the, they stole my piece of meat. Lots of for pieces. This, but that's okay. Lots I'll of let pieces. Them.